Today, we're going to talk about Zoom security controls that you should be aware of. Hi, Taylor here at Financial Potion, where video is your financial potion. And to never miss out on a video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and then click on that bell so you're notified every Friday at 5 p.m. Arizona time that a new video has been uploaded. For one-to-one -one training or just to support our content, please click above and connect with us on our Patreon page. When you're using a Zoom meeting, you'll notice at the bottom toolbar that one of the tools is security. And the very first option is to lock the meeting. Even if someone has the correct passcode, if you lock the meeting, no one will be able to get through. This is great to use when you know everyone is already on Zoom and you don't want to get Zoom bombed by hackers. They may show inappropriate content or just be a nuisance or just be an annoyance in the middle of your meeting. And so you can lock the meeting and click on that button uh, in order to make it so no one else can join. And if someone does get kicked out of your group and needs to get back in, you'll actually need to turn off the lock meeting in order to let other people join. Another option on there is you're normally going to see that enable waiting room will already be checked. And what that means is when someone signs into Zoom, they're gonna get put into that waiting room and then you have to click on admit or admit all to allow people to join. Now, if you are gonna have hundreds of people joining your meeting, you may or may not want to have to click on admit all or admit individually. And so many times you can actually click on security and then turn off the waiting room. So then people can just easily get accessed into the meeting without you having to admit all. Hide profile pictures. I've honestly never clicked that myself, but if you wanted to hide the profile pictures, you can do that right there within your security settings. Allow participants to. This is an important aspect that if you're gonna be having a collaborative conversation and perhaps people need to share their screens, it's best just to click on allow participants to share screen. So then that way you don't have to make multiple people co-host and people can seamlessly just share their screen and join that conversation. I always leave on chat. We typically want to have conversations. We want to allow people to communicate with each other. But if for whatever reason you wanted to disable chat, maybe people are getting too chatty in the chat, you can go ahead and click it right here within your security settings. Rename themselves. This is really important to allow people to rename themselves because sometimes people are using shared accounts. Uh, and so they might have their wife or their husband's name on there. Other times it might just be a business organization name and you want to rename it for yourself and who you are. Or maybe you're playing a game. I know I did a murder mystery via Zoom before. And so we all changed our names to who we were in the murder mystery game. Um, allowing people to unmute themselves. Once again, if you're having a discussion where you do want participation, you'll want to make sure that you allow people to unmute themselves. However, if your group is too chatty and you just need them to listen and not be able to unmute themselves, you may want to click on that button and that way they are unable to unmute themselves and you can keep them mute until you're ready for them to unmute. One of the main pieces is to start video. You're going to want people to start their video. We want to connect with people. We want to have a conversation. But if for some reason you don't want people to start their video, you can simply uncheck that option. Now, suspend participant activities. Everyone's video and audio will be turned off. Screen sharing will stop and the meeting will be locked. This is when there is just some bad stuff happening and you just need everyone to have their stuff off, uh, stop sharing, just suspend all activities. Uh, and also we'll send a report to Zoom of what happened. I've never pressed this button, but it's important to know about this button. If you're having large groups and once again, someone goes rogue and someone needs to be taken care of. Within the actual participants, if you ever needed to remove someone, that's where you would do that. You can remove an individual if there's one individual person that's causing a problem um, versus the whole group. 
And so I hope this helps you better understand the security controls that you have within Zoom and when you may need to use some of those controls. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. And if you need assistance with your meetings, if you need assistance with your webinars and, and live stream facilitation, please don't hesitate to reach out to us as well and schedule a complimentary strategy session.